As the president of the foundation, I sincerely thank for the presence of you all. Let me uh, first uh, introduce the board members of the Liu Foundation. Among 15 board members, uh, 12 members are present here today. Uh, let us welcome them with applause. Uh, Professor Yu Hun. Uh, my predecessor, the former president of our foundation, he is currently the professor of uh, Old National University Graduate School of Public Administration. Uh, actually, he, he went through East-West Center uh, about uh, 70 years ago. Uh, I think uh, his Hawaii visit this time is... Uh, uh, very moving, uh, nostalgic uh, journey, uh, probably. Uh, he is uh, already 94 years old, but uh, he looks so young. Uh, I'm very happy to see him. Next, uh, Professor Yu Jung Ho, uh, Dr. Yu Jung Ho, uh, uh, medical doctor. And actually, he is the cousin of uh, Professor Paul Liu. He uh, lives in Chicago uh, now. Uh, Professor Chang Seok Lee, Yi Chang Seok. Yeah, yes. <clears throat> he is the professor of a real estate state at the Gangnam University near Seoul. Uh, he had a special, beloved relationship with the Ryu family in Seoul. Uh, next, uh, Tony Chu Gang Il, Huang Il Chu, and his wife together. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, a, a beloved student of Professor Paul Ryu and former. Actually, a minister of a Korean government. Next is Professor Emerita Yi Young Ran. She also a beloved student of Professor Liu. Uh, she uh, is currently Professor Emerita at uh, Songmyung Women's University in Seoul. Uh, Professor Ku Sangjin, Sangjin Gu. Professor of Criminal Law at the Seoul City University and now is acting as an attorney in Seoul. Next, uh, Professor Emeritus Song Nagin, Nagin Song. Yeah. Uh, Song Nagin is a professor of constitutional law at the law school of Seoul National University. Uh, he was actually uh, 29th president of Seoul National University. Professor Yu Gi Chun was the uh, ninth university of Seoul National University. <laughs> he uh, 29th uh, president. 26th, oh, excuse me, <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Kang Dong Bum, professor. Kang Dong Bum, yeah. yeah. He is uh, uh, still acting uh, professor of criminal law at the Weihua Women's University, yeah, a graduate of uh, Seoul National University. Next, uh, attorney Kim Jong Seok. Kim. Uh, uh, he is actually uh, my uh, classmate and uh, he was the only single uh, uh, scholarship receiving student of Helen Selbing, Mrs. Ryu. Yeah, only. <laughs> yes. uh, and Mrs. Yi Mi Kyung, executive secretary. <laughs> 
Oh, our foundation, very excellent, uh, able uh, lady, yeah, she is. Uh, besides these uh, present, present persons, I remember uh, this time some friends and colleagues of Paul Liu and of me. Uh, I can merely uh, name uh, like uh, Bong Yun Che. Uh, I had uh, acquaintance with uh, him at Berkeley. Glenn Page, Sode Sok, Professor Van Dyke, uh, Mrs. Van Dyke is here present. Thank you. George Simpson, biography uh, specialist. Yi Han Bin, Zhou Yize, Herbert Choi, the, and Ronald Moon. The, I still remember uh, this persons. Now uh, I want to introduce uh, two speakers of uh, congratulations for today. Uh, first, Professor Ed Schultz, the former director of this center, and real Korean friend, Korea friend. So may I invite him? Yes. Come over here. Well, so good to you But since you spoke in English, I will too. Uh, aloha, aloha ko to Tuki Seoul Ocean Bunri Hwan Yong Hamida. The topic, law and culture, or culture and law, uh, I think is really an intriguing choice of topics because it brings out this symbiotic relationship between law and culture, and you can't separate one from the other. And uh, Essentially, I'm a Korean historian, a historian of Korea, and if you look at the earliest Korean records, uh, especially the dynastic histories, you see again and again and again this concern for law and culture. So I thought the topic was, was, a, was a perfect one. Um, and when you talk about culture, you also have to talk about Confucianism, because that's part of the culture and it's also really a part of the law. And uh, Confucianism, was introduced to, to Korea, to Koryo, I think in uh, 372. That's the earliest, the Sanguk Sagi, earliest record of Confucianism coming in. And then immediately they established schools in, 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 in Kogoryo to teach both penal and administrative law. So this is really, from the historical record, one of the earliest things. And so if you understand Korean culture, you have to also understand uh, Confucianism. And actually, um, according to the histories, Kija, the, uh, the alleged uh, Chinese scholar that came to Chosun, uh, maybe the 8th century BCE, he also, when he came, theoretically, he or allegedly brought ritual, propriety, agriculture, and the eight prohibitions. So basically establishing law. Uh, Kija, I'm pretty sure, is a mythical figure, but it does show you the importance from earliest time on, the, the whole thing of, of law. And uh, it, as I say, if you read the earliest histories, they again and again talk about holding government to a higher standard. And there's the, the whole theme that if the standard is high, the society will, will, will uh, uh, flourish. And if it's bad, the society will fall apart. So another, this, I, this idea, culture and law uh, come together. And when you read the historical histories, whether it's the Sanguk Sagi, Sanguk Yus, well, Sanguk Sagi, Koryosa, Koryosa Jelyo, Chosun, Wangjuk Shilok, again and again, you see historians making comments on the behavior of people and uh, holding them up to a high level of, of, of legal behavior, good behavior, praise and blame. And that's sort of the way this whole idea of, of law and culture are being brought together. And uh, the, there's, there's the whole tradition of remonstrance in, in, in Korean history in which scholars are, are urged to speak out or officials are urged to speak out if they see something wrong. So again, the whole idea of speaking forward and bringing about a better culture through, through law. Now, I'm a cordial specialist and uh, I came across this particular passage uh, that was written, uh, well, it was, takes place theoretically in uh, 1250 
And to me, it really epitomizes how culture and law come together. And I'll be really brief, but just I'm going to read you a very brief excerpt. And it, it goes is, oh, there was a brother and a sister in a dispute. The brother said, a daughter and son are both offspring of parents. How can the sister alone get the parents' wealth and the son get nothing to share? The sister said, father gave me the house, all the treasures, what you got was one black hat, a set of clothes, a pair of hemp sandals, and one stack of papers, and that's all. The record is all complete. How can you disobey? They disputed this for several years, and uh, finally uh, they, uh, a magistrate summoned the two people before him and asked, when your father died, where was your mother? They replied, she died first. How old were you at that time? They said, sister was already married, brother was seven or eight. The magistrate then sued them, saying, in a parent's heart, a boy and girl are equal. How could they be generous to the oldest married daughter and stingy to the motherless seven or eight-year-old boy? The only one the boy could turn to for help was the sister. If he inherited goods that were given, if, he, if the inherited goods were given to the sister, I fear her love for him would be stopped. And so in nourishing the boy, something it would be, sometimes it would be incomplete. Now the boy has already grown, and so he will use the paper to make documents, to appeal, and wear the black robe and hat, uh, uh, wearing the black robe and hat and sandals, we will come to report this to the government. There will be somebody to decide these. That is why these four things were left. My idea is like this. The brother and sister heard this and were moved facing each other and they wept. The magistrate finally divided, the, 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 divided in half the inheritance, giving it out equally. So here we have a clear example of culture and law being interacting and, and bringing it forward. So this sort of, to me, epitomizes, hopefully, some of the things you'll be talking about today. But anyway, thank you for this chance to give you a little history lesson and thank you for coming. His uh, impressive uh, speech as a Korea specialist, uh, really. Uh, next speaker will be the pro uh, Professor Baek Tae-ung, current uh, director of this uh, center. And uh, actually, he is uh, uh, my former student, and I'm so happy to see him. Uh, I'm very proud of him. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Professor Chung Go Che. Good morning. Welcome to the Center for Korean Studies at the University of Hawaii in Manoa. My name is Taeung Baek. I'm professor of law and director of the Center for Korean Studies here. I'm delighted to host, co-host this Paul K. Ryu commemoration symposium with the theme of a law and culture in Korea in cooperation uh, with the Paul Ryu Foundation. Especially, I would like to thank Professor Jong Go Che, who made this symposium possible with his uh, tireless efforts and enthusiasm. I think we can give a big uh, applause to him now. Uh, professor Che, as he mentioned, uh, was my professor when I was a law student at Seoul National University. And uh, as you know, he is an excellent professor, but he is also a poet an artist, I think. I'm so glad that uh, he is here. I'm also uh, very glad to acknowledge the presence of very important uh, guests from Korea uh, today. I'm glad to see again uh, Attorney Chu kwang il and his uh, uh, wife, uh, Mrs. Zhu. And uh, I'm also very glad to uh, meet in person, many of the directors of this Korea, uh, this uh, Ryu Foundation. Especially, I would like to welcome uh, former president of Seoul National University, Professor Song Lagin, who was so kind to me uh, before I came uh, to the United States for uh, study, I think in late 90s. Thank you very much. As you may know, I studied criminal law with a textbook written by uh, Professor Paul Kichan Ryu. And uh, I am happy to report to you that I got an A 
for the course. <laughs> Not all of the courses I got A, but yes, criminal law, yes. <laughs> it is great to commemorate Dr. Yu's scholarship, his life, and his great activities here at the Center for Korean Studies. I, uh, because uh, Professor jong already introduced all of the participants, I will not introduce uh, uh, again, but I'm sure this will be a great uh, learning opportunity for us to, uh, 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 during this, this uh, presentation and discussions. Uh, lunch will be served after this event, so please come uh, join it later. And I would like to acknowledge my staff, uh, Courtney Oshiro Shin, Hein Lee, and uh, Ye Jun Gwon, Yun Se Che, and Tawanza, and many other people worked to make this possible. So thank you very much for your work. So thank you again for coming, and I hope you will enjoy your stay in Hawaii. Thank you. Before beginning our symposium, we have prepared a, a how to say the video of uh, Paul Bruce's life. Uh,
그렇지만은 음, 저는 <웃음> 예수님이고 어, 아직도 그 하나님께서 이 불쌍한 사람이면 더욱더 그 죄인이 더 죄인일수록 더욱더 사랑하시고 더욱더 그분이 원하는 것을 얻으시는 그런 일입니다. 그래서 제가 그렇게 원하니까 아, 그러니까 같이 그런 그런 지금 좀 미안을 얻으면서 아직도 이런을 위해서 혼자서 남은 것만을 사업을 좀 해버려야 되겠다 이렇게 생각을 하고 있습니다. 뭐, 뭐 너무 오래 하는 시간이 되게도 또 역시 그, 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 그 일체적인 그런 그 건강 상태가 그렇게 오래 지속되는지 모르겠습니다. 원래는 그때 뭐 든든한 사람이 아닐까. 그러니까 대단히 어, 그런 어, 어, 뭐 없지 않겠나 이런 생각도 있지만 그래도 저는 역시 제가 해야 할 그, 어, 어떤 이 기본적인 고리에 관한 그런 해설 써놓으로써 내가 그 소리 하고 정말 다루고를 당한 것은 아니라 그런 것을 변증을 And now the first uh, speaker, uh, presenter is uh, Dr. Liu Zhengho from Chicago. Uh, as I said, uh, he is uh, the cousin of Paul Liu. Please come here over. Yeah. Okay. Dear distinguished and honored guests, my name is uh, Dr. Zhengho Liu, but R is silent, so Liu. Okay, we, we wrote R-Y-U, but we pronounce U. I am a neurologist from Chicago. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to share with me, uh, with you, about my uncle. My uncle's name is Dr. Paul K. R-Y-U, but I know him simply as my law school uncle. Uncle Paul comes from a family of six sons and two daughters. Everyone in the family has become either doctors or pharmacists except him. He's the only one who has pursued a career in law. Around that time, the Japanese who control Korea would force Koreans to change their names to Japanese-style name. My grandfather resisted that and kept our family name. My grandmother was the one who encouraged all her children to pursue a career in medicine. He, uh, they were all born and raised during Korean invasion and the control of 
Korea for 35 years. She reasoned her children would be respected even in Japanese-dominated culture if their children were doctors. All that time, the Japanese would discriminate against all Koreans unless they cooperated, uh, they cooperate with Japanese. My uncle was a good student. When the time came for him to apply for college, he applied to Gyeongsang Imperial University, presently known as Seoul National University. During the interview, Japanese professor who was interviewing my uncle questioned about his family background. It was well known among the Japanese and Korean that my grandfather was involved in anti-Japanese activities. He, his family was uh, on the top list of four classification which identified the people involved in Japanese resistance movement. About 20 names were on the list and uh, my grandfather was uh, on the top of the list. The interim Korean government was in Shanghai in the time. From, from there, the freedom fighter published the Korean independent newspaper. Using three routes, these papers were smuggled into the Korean peninsula. About 70% of came through, 70% of them came through my grandfather. My grandfather and uh, Kim Gu, the chief of interim Korean government in Shanghai, planned the Pyongnam provincial office building bomb bombing. Freedom fight, fighter named Ye Jin Kim, Kim Ye Jin, a bump into the crowd of uh, high-ranking Japanese officer. My grandfather had hidden Mr. Yejin Kim in his house for two months, and then my grandfather uh, sent him to Shanghai safely. He also secretly funded the military training facility in Manchuria for freedom fighters, as well as uh, founding two schools. One of these schools was uh, Sung In Trade High School, and uh, the other one was Sung Dok School. He served as uh, chairman of the board of a trustee for both school. Many of the graduates of this school became freedom fighter. Many of uh, my grandfather's uh, Jap anti-Japanese activity were known by his family. During the interview, Japanese professor asked uh, my uncle to pick a side and uh, confess or at least uh, verify his uh, family involvement. He, rena he remained silent and walked out of the interview and withdrew his application from the university. Then he went to Japan. The Japanese school only considered entrance exam score for admission. In order to get into Japanese Imperial University, he needed to graduate from Japanese high school first. So he took entrance exam and was 
accept is to accept graduated valedictorian and applied to Tokyo Imperial University, presently called Tokyo University, to study law. After completing his study at the Tokyo Imperial University, he did his uh, graduate study at the Dongbu International Dongbu Imperial University for about three years. Then he returned to Korea in 1946 to become professor of uh, professor at the Seoul National University. Later on, he went to Harvard University as, uh, as an exchange professor, and uh, in 1958, he received his doctorate degree, doctorate degree from Yale University. Upon completing his education at the Yale University, he returned to Seoul National University. He went from professor to dean and uh, finished his career as the president of Seoul National University. True to his upbringing, he used his education and influence to fight injustice and oppression. He had uh, dedicated his career to democratization activity in Korea. General Park Jong-hee's military coup succeeded in 1961, overwhelming Prime Minister Jang Myon government. He held his uh, presidency for next 18 years until he was assassinated assassinated by Korean KCIA Chief Kim Jae-gyu in 1979. President Park Jong-hee sent a professor of Korean constitution to study how to establish a lifetime president in Korea. My uncle found out about this form, this from high-ranking Japanese general when he was in Taiwan for another worldwide academic meeting. When he, when my uncle returned to Korea, he released this information to the general public. He thought that this effort by President Park Jong-hee would lead to dictatorship for Korea. Therefore, he taught his student at the Seoul National University and others to oppose such ideology. At that instance, uncle became Park Jong-hee's enemy and attempts were made toward my uncle's life. My uncle sought asylum of the United States. His wife, Helen Silving, my aunt, contacted the Secretary of State and the Professor Rai Shao at the Harvard University. Strong letter was also sent to Prime Minister Kim Jong-pil. This letter helped him leave Korea for the United States of America. He lived in the United States until his death, 1998. My uncle was no ordinary man. He was not only an intelligent man, but incorruptible, and upright. He could not tolerate injustice and uh, with courage and uh, determination, he challenged every form of corruption. 
He plays a major role in shaping my personality and ethics. My family was originally from Pyongyang, which is in North Korea. During Korean War, my family fled and came to Busan, which is the southernmost part of the Korean Peninsula. I attended the early part of elementary school education in Busan, but fifth grade, I transferred to Seoul for about two years. And then I moved back to Busan and went to Gyeongnam High School and uh, Gyeongnam Middle School and Gyeongnam High School. Because I was not from Busan originally, I did not have a Busan accent. This caused the native, the native Busan student to pick on me and others who did not have uh, their accent. In order to defend myself, I formed a group of 30 students who did not have a Busan accent <laughs> to defend, defend ourselves. I was, I was a good fighter. I had the strongest punch in my school. And then later I found, when I entered medical school, I know why I became strong. Uh, when, I, when I learned neurology, I found why I, I was strong. Uh, therefore, I was picked as the leader of the group. But when I asked my secretary to type, I was picked as a boss of the group. But <laughs> my secretary changed the leader instead of, instead of a boss. My secretary, is America, my secretary is American, and then she said, Dr. Ruth, boss is too strong. <laughs> he said. So he changed from boss to leaders. I told my uncle this story, and I thought my uncle would criticize me, but instead he encouraged me and told me that I was a natural leader. He also taught me that I should never attack first, but if I am ever attacked, I had the right to defend myself. My uncle also taught me that a man needed to know how to defend himself. So he, he suggested me I studied judo. So he told me not to quit until I get black, my black belt. And I gave him my word. Because of the rigors of high school study, I was not able to get black belt in, in high school. But when I entered medical school, True to my promise, I got my black belt in judo. It was already time for me to apply for medical school. Seoul National University was one of my choices, but I failed. Um, my sisters overhead, and uh, if I got into Seoul National University, I could find a boarding house so I can enjoy my freedom, my freedom with my friend. When my uncle f found out, he told me to wake up from fantasy and uh, make sure to move in with him as he lived just across the street from the medical school. I assured that, I assured then that he cared for me and wanted to give me uh, what was best for me. In high school and college, 
I had a budding political ambition. I shared this with my uncle. When he came to Korea from USA, he strongly suggested that I not pursue a political career. He said because of uh, Jung Hee Park and uh, Park Jung Hee, and uh, he considered him a dictator, politics were dangerous as many dissidents were killed. Instead, he suggested me I should stay with uh, my medical career. I also shared this ambition with my dad. My dad encouraged me to say that uh, there was a Chinese doctor, Son Moon, who was uh, also a politician. So that was a good possibility. However, when I brought up the same idea when I was in medical school, my father was strongly against it. I didn't understand why he changed his position. When I shared this with my uncle, he told me that your dad was very wise. He knew when to encourage fantasy and when to become realistic. I really appreciate how my uncle put everything into a good perspective. After completing high school, I entered the Korean army as an army physician. My ranking was the first lieutenant. I worked under a very corrupt battalion commander who used to funnel medication from the army pharmacy, sell it, and pocket the money. When I refused to go along with with his corruption, he threatened me, but I stood my stand, my ground, I stood my ground, and eventually I was able to report his corruption to a two-star general. The battalion commander was uh, disciplined and I was transferred to different unit. When I shared this story with my uncle, he said uh, I did the honorable thing and he was uh, proud of me. But with the truth is, I could not have done this without influence of my uncle and my father who taught me to stand for justice and uh, fight corruption. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Liu, uh, with your vivid uh, description uh, and with uh, uh, interesting episodes. Next, uh, our uh, symposium today is uh, timely, quite uh, restricted, uh, tight schedule. So each speaker uh, has uh, 15 minutes, at the most uh, 20 minutes. Uh, Next speaker will be uh, Dr. Chu Guang Il. Please come in. Dear distinguished guest and other guest, I am very happy to be here and honored and humbled to make a presentation in Hawaii, Esperi. And I first of all, I would like to thank you for your contribution to this occasion. It's possible in Hawaii, Professor Beck. Nice to meet you again. And again, secondary, I'd like to introduce Professor Sanggon Lee, who is now active professor in, at this University of Hawaii, colleague of Professor Beck. Would you please stand up? 
he was my classmate of Gyeonggi High School and College of Law, Seoul National University, so that we, both of us, learned from Dr. Paul K. Liu the criminal law and other case studies. And altogether, he's now become a very famous professor in economics at the University of Hawaii. And I remember, uh, respect him and I'm very happy to have you here. And my short and poor essay was written after the death of Dr. Yu four years after, in 1992. And in memory of Dr. Yu, I translated into English by the help of chat GPT. <laughs> so uh, it, this is a very... Uh, short and poor essay in memory of Dr. Paul K. Liu, uh, who loved me and urged me to become a professor of law at the Seoul University. But now I became a lawyer, attorney, both in Korea and Washington, D.C. And I have lived the essential part of my life as a public prosecutor for 30 years. So at the uh, assassination of former President Park jong hee I was investigated personally and examined his dead body and put the older killers into jail. And now I'm enjoying my private life for over 20 years on my last position in prosecutor's office was the chief prosecutor of Seoul High Prosecutor's Office. And when the Kim Dae-jung administration came to us, he appointed me to chief ombudsman of the Republic of Korea. So I'm happy to read within a 15 minute time limit my poor essay my reminiscence of Professor Paul K. Liu, the seizures of goddess Moira. Moira is the goddess of fate in Greek mythology. The three goddess of fate representing the past, present, and future weave the thread of human life when a baby is born. It is said that by weaving drawing and cutting the thread, they symbolically represent human life. In ancient Greece, Moira was portrayed as young, diligent, and serious, while in the painting of Romantic era, they were depicted as fearsome. In Goya's painting, the goddess of fate, the three goddesses are depicted as fires resembling witches. The goddess on the far left, Cloto, is pulling a spool in the form of a baby. Lachesis is looking through a magnifying glass and Atropos is holding a pair of scissors. Actually, I am not a determinist. I brought up fate out of blue because of my former teacher, Dr. Paul K. Liu, who passed away in 1998. When I think of him, I feel like I received a predestined prophecy, similar to Shaman's fortune telling. It seems that I might have been stuck in a self-imposed destiny where my life would have been completely different if Dr. Liu had not resigned from the presidency of Seoul National University. In 1966, when I was a graduate student, looking back, he may have wanted to move the thread of my life according to his will. My connection with Paul K. Liu 
goes back to early 1960s, which is now a vague memory. When I was attending Seoul National University College of Law, he worked as a dean. Later, in September 1965, when I passed the fifth judicial examination, he was the president of the national, Seoul National University. There was never an empty seat when he gave us his lectures. Of course, being late was out of question. He was someone who always overflowed with his passion and love for law. His strictness about attendance and inspiring lectures arose admiration for law in us. His authority on criminal law was truly overwhelming. I only took a few courses, including criminal law, from him. However, it was his kindness that allowed me to build a close relationship with him and create the countless cherished memories. During my third year at College of Law in 1963, I served as the president of the Criminal Law Society, the Club Irish. That was probably the first academic association for a case study of law in Korea. As a leader of the group, I visited Dr. Liu's office every week and received the problems of criminal law case for the seminar. Dr. Liu was very strict about self-management and other often exercised with dumbbells when I visited his home. As strict with himself, he demanded that his students dedicate themselves to their studies. It was not surprising that someone like him became the president of SNU. I believed it was a Saturday afternoon in the fall of 1965 when I was a great student at law school, witnessed a remarkable lectures by Dr. Liu, even German cases. The lecture took place in his presidential office, where Dr. Liu, as the president, shared his profound knowledge of German criminal procedure with a small group of 13 graduate law students, including myself. The memory of that solemn and impeccable event remains engraved deeply in my mind. In 1966, as a deputy prosecutor for Seoul District Prosecutor's Office, I visited Dr. Liu, who had resigned as a president and helped write criminal law textbook. At the time, not only myself, but also others such as Lee Jae-sang, for former professors of Yuha University, and Kim Chan-jin worked together. This book became the foundation of the Korean general principles of criminal law. My friends sometimes looked at me with envy. They sometimes called me you are hidden secretary of president or adopted son of the president. I was uh, my only son, uh, uh, the son of my father, but some guys told me the foster son of Dr. Liu. And you, in fact, he congratulated me as if he's my father. When I passed by them, he held my waist and twirled me around a few times in his office to celebrate. Perhaps at that moment, he had already planned out my future before I even, I even realized it. Dr. Liu always wanted me to make me a scholar rather than a public prosecutor. I don't know if it was because of his affection for me, but he urged me to study abroad in the United States. Moreover, he even offered to arrange for me to attend Yale Law School, where he had studied 
he also said he would try to postpone my military service. In fact, three of my senior colleagues, Kang Gujin, Kim Young Mu, and Shin Hong Sik, had already gone abroad to study at this request. So it was natural that my own study abroad was scheduled to happen as well. Dr. Liu asked me to join the Language Research Institute at the Seoul National University, where I could focus on studying English. She also appointed me as a teaching assistant at the College of Law, which gave me valuable experience and insight into legal philosophy. Under his guidance, I learned about the definition of law, difference between ethics and morality, and the mindset of a legal practitioner with a philosopher, philosophical approach. However, as Jay Galia expressed, people may plan the work, but it is heavens that determine the outcome there may be predetermined destinies in the world that are beyond human control. Due to an unexpected event, Dr. Liu had to leave the university against his will, and as a result, the threat of destiny that he had intended for me was cut off. Later, as the Yushin regime, the totalitarian, authoritarian regime began, Dr. Liu, who deeply valued freedom of ideology, went into exile in the United States. In the 1980s, every time he visited Korea, he actively sought me out. Whenever I, he did, I happily went to meet him and showed my respect. However, it was already after the goddess of fate had taken out her seizures. In March 1968, after my graduation from judicial law school, while serving as a judge advocate, legal officer in Vietnam, I found myself standing aboard a ship surrounded by the sound of the Korean military song. I suddenly thought of Dr. Liu, who had encouraged me to study in the United States. Ah, I am leaving, as he advised, but not to the United States, but to the battlefield Vietnam. I briefly felt some, some regret. As the years went by, while working at the Chuncheon District Prosecutor's Office, I was sent to study abroad at the Georgetown and George Washington University, sponsored by the state government, State Department of the United States in July 1964. Once again, the thought of Dr. Liu came to my mind as it had become a long-standing habit of mine. Now, I am really going to the United States to study, as he suggested. If things had gone according to his desires and will, I would have attended Yale University, but now I am finding my own way. Nearly four years after Dr. Yu's passing, the connection between me and Dr. Yu would have been cut by the goddess of fate, Moira, a long time ago. However, every time I gaze at the sky, the chilly winter sky, at the end of the season, I firmly remind myself I became a prosecutor in the end, I reflect on the thread of fate that had thrown to me. Thank you for listening. Paul Kelly honored his name, even my name, 
and this great meeting in Hawaii. I still, every time I pray, I always remember his name. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Shu, uh, I thank you very much for your impressive and moving witness for us. Uh, this is uh, my time. Uh, I, I titled Paul Liu and on East-West philosophy and the Korean culture. Actually, uh, I made a speech here in Hawaii at the Center for Biographical Research on Paul Liu. Uh, it was uh, about uh, 20 years ago already. Uh, and I made uh, some uh, sketch of uh, Paul Liu's life, and uh, I'll skip it. Uh, page 10. Why uh, Paul Liu came to here? I quote Helen Silving's uh, autobiography, Memoir. Uh, she vividly uh, witnesses uh, uh, her and uh, her, uh, their uh, presence here uh, in Paul uh, Silving's Memoir, page 11. I'll uh, read it. As was uh, to be anticipated, a conflict arose from the fact that Paul is a Presbyterian and I am Jewish. And each one of us is uh, attached to his or her faith. Finally, we agreed upon a Unitarian rite. The ceremony was held at the house of the president uh, of New York University, Dr. Stoddard. Shortly after the ceremony, we proceeded to Honolulu, Hawaii, where Paul was to participate in the prestigious East-West Philosophers' Conference. Nothing seemed to be quite ordinary on our lives. Neither was our so-called honeymoon in Hawaii. Paul was fully absorbed by the East-West Philosophers' Conference and a course offered at the University of Hawaii, which he conducted along with other scholars. To summarize the matter, during our six-week stay on the island, we went to the ocean once, and a single time to a hula hula show. However, I thoughtfully, uh, thoroughly enjoyed Paul's success at the conference. His paper was uh, splendid and extremely well received by other participants. It opened up a new horizons in anthropology, comparative culture studies, and comparative linguistics, showing how these disciplines could be interpreted as uh, interconnected. We find Paul Liu was uh, the, uh, in the middle of the first uh, line. Next page, we see uh, the uh, photo. Oh. This picture is really significant. Uh, it is uh, Factually, almost all uh, intellectuals at that time uh, gathered here, uh, philosophers, anthropologists like that. And among them, I pointed uh, uh, some uh, significant scholars. First one is a Chinese legal philosopher, John Wu. Wu Qingxiong. Uh, interestingly, uh, he wrote his autobiography here in Hawaii. Its title is Beyond the East and the West. It is translated also uh, into Korean, steady seller, uh, 
especially to the Korean Catholic Catholics. So this was uh, written uh, just here in Hawaii. And I have published my English book, uh, East Asian Jurisprudence. You see the picture on the page 14. The, at the front page, I showed uh, three representative uh, East Asian legal philosophers from China, Wu Qingxiong, from Japan, Tanaka Kotaro, and from Korea, Paul Liu. So I think uh, it is uh, uh, important and significant. Next page, you see a, a <clears throat> face, Professor Charles Moore, uh, just at, below this uh, east-west uh, street, uh, maybe just uh, uh, offside, uh, opposite side of, uh, there is a Moore Hall of Hawaii uh, University. Uh, uh, this is the professor, uh, Charles Moore. He was uh, the representative of Scala at that time in philosophical department. Uh, founder of the journal Philosophy East and West. It comes still. And next page uh, we see the President Sinclair, uh, the President of the uh, University of Hawaii at that time. And next page, uh, gentlemen, is uh, philosopher Sidney Hook. He is actually very interesting intellectual. Uh, he originated from Jewish, the Austria, but uh, he was a professor at the Columbia University. Uh, and he was invited to, to Korea in uh, 1959, and he delivered a public lecture at the Seoul National University Auditorium sponsored by the Sasange magazine. Probably uh, Paul Liu met him there again. And Sidney Hook was uh, a representative uh, philosopher uh, criticizing communism and the socialism. Uh, so. Next page uh, 18, uh, Professor uh, Liu's doctoral thesis at the Yale, The Korean Culture and the Criminal Responsibility, was, a, of course, a product of a New Haven School of Jurisprudence, centered at Yale Law School. And uh, his thesis, uh, doctoral thesis, was uh, strongly influenced uh, uh, by anthropology, probably uh, especially by his uh, good friend, Zhang uh, Dewi, David Zhang. Uh, actually, Paul Liu wanted uh, to nominate uh, his friend Zhang uh, Dewi as a professor uh, at the Seoul National University, but it failed. Nevertheless, at the Sabop uh, Dehagwon, the graduate school of law, uh, Paul Liu made a uh, lecture, uh, a course, Law and Culture. They co lectured with Zhang Dewi. Yeah, so. So next page, uh, page 20. We see the picture of Professor uh, Filmer Northrop. He was uh, the, one of the uh, Paul Lewis uh, teacher at the Yale uh, Anthropology. And his uh, major uh, book is uh, called The Meeting of East and the West. The, the, the main, uh, main uh, basis of East-West Philosophers' Conference at that time. So, uh, Paul Liu attended uh, that conference with his teacher, 
Uh, so, and uh, in his uh, doctoral thesis, uh, he cites uh, quite, uh, several times directly from his uh, uh, teacher, uh, Filma Northrop. Filma Northrop's thesis was uh, East culture is a culture of intuition, West culture is a culture of postulate. At that time, this was uh, almost generally accepted, uh, but uh, gradually it uh, was uh, criticized uh, in accordance with the age of so-called globalization. Uh, frankly, nowadays, uh, what is East, what is West, uh, such a differentiation has no strong meaning, but at that time, West is West, East is East. So, this uh, thesis was mainly discussed in this conference. As we almost know, uh, his uh, Paul Liu's uh, doctoral thesis was uh, published in Korea uh, at the magazine of Sasange. Why Sasange? It is interesting. Sasange was the uh, most popular and uh, influential uh, magazine. Almost all the intellectuals and the students read that at that time in their pockets. But, um, of course, it was uh, founded by uh, Zhang Junha. But uh, nowadays uh, it became uh, more clear uh, this magazine was uh, uh, sponsored by uh, the Congress of Cultural Freedom. Uh, that was uh, the international organization of uh, uh, democratic, liberal democratic uh, sides uh, uh, centered in USA and the Europe in defense of the threat of the communism. So uh, intellectuals also made a, 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 a combine, uh, coherence each other. So uh, anyway, uh, Paul Liu published uh, in, uh, his doctoral thesis in this magazine. And his colleague, uh, Professor Hwang San Duk, made a criticism. Uh, it was not, uh, frankly, not uh, so academic criticism, quite uh, emotional. And he uh, said, uh, oh, Paul Liu sailed Korea uh, just uh, like an a, a African culture with uh, the uh, emphasis of Korean shamanism. Uh, of course, uh, shamanism to uh, Paul Liu was uh, an object of uh, overcoming. He uh, not uh, phrased uh, shamanism, but uh, to make a rational understanding and uh, 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 thinking, shamanism must be overcome. But presently, still, shamanism is... Uh, quite strong. That was uh, Paul Liu's uh, point. Uh, but uh, his colleague, Huang San Duk, said, uh, uh, shamanism, with uh, shamanism, Paul Liu became doctor uh, in USA. So, but I think, I miss, uh, I think uh, it's uh, quite uh, missing uh, of this uh, uh, criticism. So uh, I want to make a uh, conclusion. Closing my presentation, I recollect again the brilliant intellectualism of my teacher and his keen interest on East-West philosophy. We live now in the age of the globalization with uh, the global family. However, due to the complex clashes of civilizations, 
we still suffer the wars and the conflicts all around the world. I see the announcement of the next East-West Philosophers Conference here in Hawaii in the in June of the next year with the title Trauma and Healing. I feel happy to be able to review the last 70 years of East-West uh, West academic progress through Paul K. Liu. I want to emphasize that Korean intellectuals should have keen interests and the sounding understanding of East-West global knowledge even more than his days. Thank you. Next will be the Professor Yi Young Ran, uh, criminologist in Korea. Uh, please come on. My name is Young Nan Lee. I was a criminal law professor at uh, Sungmyung Women's University. It is a truly an uh, truly an honor uh, for me today to stand before you to share my experience with uh, Professor Paul K. Yu. Professor Yu was a Korean criminal law scholar uh, who conducted research of unprecedented deaths and with in criminal law, legal education, politics, and even religion on a global scale. I have had an utmost pride for having Professor Yu as my advisor throughout my life. I only wish that I had I followed his footsteps more closely. As part of his ideology on criminal law and his generous stance towards legal education, Professor Liu wished his students to become a complete, well-rounded scholar in a free democratic society combined with German-style systematic legal knowledge. And Anglo-American style uh, practical knowledge through case studies. He also encouraged his students to have a profound knowledge in psychology, psych uh, anthropology, uh, legal philosophy, and other related studies to be a well-rounded scholar in criminal law. It was such a long time ago and I, although I have not become the student he had hoped, I am eternally thankful to have been his uh, last disciple in Korea before his departure to America. It is my great honor to share with you Professor Liu's view on criminal law and his achievements. We often can figure out his or her ideas and thoughts, infer from a person's words, writing, or even actions. Professor Liu passed away in 1998 at the age of 83. Not only are there no more subsequent researches, but there are also less scholars today who remember him. Thus, it is challenging to look into his views on criminal law through his spiritual world. Moreover, only a few traces have been found about his subsequent research after he left Korea. They were about world history and culture. Unlike a criminal law, he concentrated on before he left. Abrupt changes in criminal characteristics in Korea since the 1970s 
do not make my job easier explaining what Professor Liu had to face in his days. It is therefore difficult to clarify his view on criminal law in today's perspective without taking into account the criminal and social standards of the 1970s. For those reasons, Professor Liu's ideology and views on criminal law can be best referred to his uh, doctoral thesis paper, books, uh, commentaries, as well as to our memories of his teaching and conversations. Today's scholars in criminal law seldom reflect their views and values in their research. It is not common today as it was in 1970s in Korea. Uh, for someone to make his or her argument as creatively as Professor Liu. He made his case based on comprehensive knowledge that uh, encompasses all the theories of the past. Professor Yu's academic foundation lies from his study of law in Japan for over 10 years. There he studied elaborate and meticulous theological system of continental law, especially German law, and is one familiar even in Roman Pendect law. He quoted and introduced rich descriptions of Japanese precedents and theories in his criminal law textbook. And while adopting German style systematic theories, try to implement case law based in education through Anglo-American case method. Afterwards, he went to study in the United States, where he gained his doctor's degree at Yale Law School and contributed to the development of a Korean legal studies and research in criminal law studies as a pioneer in the field of American law and education. Uh, my writing is quite long, so uh, please look at, uh, at the bottom paragraph on the page 27 about the historical value of Professor Liu's view, we can see from this part of his book. Then 60 years, at the time 60 years, but now more than 100 years, <laughs> has passed since Germany has possessed, possessed in three element crime theory of correspondence to corpus delicti, illegality and responsibility. While during these years, they, there have been numerous traces of progression in criminal law study, the author believes we have reached a stage that requires a new system. Can the three element crime theory be maintained? If so, what is it for? Is there a practical benefit in differentiating legality and so-called illegality? How should we understand intention and fault or more fundamentally the concept of responsibility? What will social science contribute to the methodology of criminal law studies? Where should be limitations to theories of legislation and interpretation be found? Numerous problems such as this should be answered by single system. 
While not carried out in, in, in this book, I wish for the ladies and gentlemen of the uh, academia to provide a sharp encouragement. We can also see in this uh, excerpt that he was not able to finish the new system. He had strived for stopped in a transition phase of some sort as he was beginning to add changes from symbolist criminal law views on the foundation of objectivist criminal law theory. What is the system he wished to build? By mentioning that, to see intention or fault as an element of the responsibility or action is merely an issue of system and uh, semantics. There is no significant difference in the interpretation and operation of the law in force. It seems we worked hard to establish a scientific view of a criminal law different from the past. As shown in his writing, it is certain that he thought the task of modern criminal law studies is to break free from uh, Kantian idealism, to correctly understand real people, and on the, that basis to build a rational criminal law system. And in order to understand his characteristics and changes in views on criminal law, uh, we can tell by the word he used often. Please take a look at page 35. The most frequently used expression uh, in his writing is rational and scientific. Rational refers to the standard of interpretation that interpretation should be done reasonably. And scientific means that the method of research should be scientific and also seems to mean convergence with other sciences. To criticize the theory of the past, one must prove the, prove the errors and point out the uh, contradictions. And to do so, various scientific considerations are essential. Professor Yu, in order to reject the stickiness of the concept of the concept and system uh, of the past criminal law research, emphasized the symbolic characteristic of language and the scientific mentions, and attempt convergence with other disciplines. In 1962. Professor Yu and his wife, Helen Silvin, already wrote a thesis called Towards a Rational System of Criminal Law. Here we can see his thought on criminal law. This is because his type, this title can be understood as another expression of his scientific criminal justice views. In this paper, he explains the functions of uh, psychology in law and forensic psychology concepts. In the Western civilization context of the current law. Uh, we don't have uh, enough time, so let's uh, jump to conclusion, page 44. 
In order to find out about Professor Liu's views on criminal uh, law after his death, we have no choice but to look into his big and deep internal views on criminal law through the window presented by some of his books. Moreover, I also think it's slightly out of order to criticize the content of his very old work when the right to cross-examination is not guaranteed. This is because even when drawing a painting, the picture may differ depending on why and when one drew it. And viewers may have different ideas of their own. Despite any criticism and evaluation, his perspective of emphasizing science and culture in criminal law studies is extraordinary. I would like to highlight the two, th two things we should learn from Professor Liu. One is that he pursued balance and originality in criminal law studies. And the other is the spirit of protection he had on individual freedom and social justice. Uh, based on his fluency in Japanese, uh, German, and English, he gained extensive understanding in the theory of German law and Anglo-American law and Japanese law, which he used to present the directions for Korean criminal law to follow. Future research on criminal law should be one that is based on general theories of criminal law and while sticking to the basics, one that combines creativity and originality like the works of crim uh, Professor Liu. The other is his wholehearted courage to realize justice. One's view on criminal law is closely related to one's philosophy of life that Professor Yu praised the free society and resisted societal injustice and corruption with every fiber of his body before he passed away is a substantive truth and thus should be judged as a historical value of act. It would have been impossible to write about freedom and democracy, law and peace, world revolution, freedom of university, and law education in such a powerful way without reflection in reality, courage, and faith. The changes and process of development our society has shown since Professor Liu passed away, evidently show the efforts he made during his life. Now we have in our criminal law studies the task of considering the purpose of, uh, and function of criminal law to conduct scientific criminal law research uh, with due diligence that fits our reality. Thank you so much for listening to my experience with Professor Yu and the analysis on his works. As all of you would agree, I hope that his works and academic views can be used positively to the development of criminal law going forward. And I also personally hope that he can be remembered by people who shared my, who shared any part of his life so long as we breathe with his work. Thank you.
โอเคมีหลายขอบคุณคุณผู้ชมมากที่สร้างการอันดับและบรรยายภาพและการแสดงผลงานต่อไปจะเป็นคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ชมคุณผู้ Okay. Present this at uh, very meaningful uh, occasion uh, about criminal justice and human rights in Korea. I prepared a PowerPoint, but I decided not to use it because everybody is just uh, relying on the text. And uh, uh, I realized that my presentation is more on general topic rather than on uh, Dr. Liu's. Uh, Uh, achievement and his idea itself, but I think it is relevant because I have been taught by uh, Dr. Liu's book, and I realized that now that uh, it was partly written by Mr. Uh, Chu, who was a research assistant to him, I think. So, uh, anyways, I'm a product of Dr. Liu's uh, scholarship, and I think. Uh, Uh, I can just share a little bit of uh, my view on current Korean criminal justice and uh, achievement, and also the uh, things that should be done uh, to further uh, our uh, criminal justice improvement and also guarantee of human rights. Under the Constitution of South Korea, uh, Article 10, the Republic of Korea guarantees all citizens. Uh, to be assured of human dignity, worth, and uh, it guarantees the right to pursue happiness. It is the duty of the state to confirm the fundamental, inviolable human rights of individual. And uh, I, we could say that no one will have any doubt about the fact that South Korean, uh, the Korean government protects human rights, dignity. And uh, non-derogable human rights that are guaranteed under the Constitution, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and other international human rights standards. Looking back on Korea's modern history, I believe Korea and Koreans should be uh, proud of the uh, achievement of a system that guarantees democracy and human rights. While pursuing rapid economic development, because many developing countries, including countries in Asia, are currently uh, suffering from the legacy of a authoritarian regime, and that they are still having difficulty in shaking off the ghost of the past authoritarian regimes, and some setbacks of human rights as well. Uh, the Achievement that South Korea had uh, shown, demonstrated, are uh, really remarkable. And Korea has uh, uh, grown a system in which human rights are guaranteed, and the rule of law is enforced, and criminal justice is realized. And uh, however, we should not think that there are no problems uh, with the current system. Or that the flaws that are currently being seen everywhere are insignificant. In particular, when diagnosing the current Korean society in terms of criminal law and criminal procedure, we cannot but identify the problems of political use of a judicial process that are found in many developing countries, and the state-centered law enforcement that ignores human rights. And the insufficient institutional guarantee of human rights in legal procedure. Still, I think we should say there is a, a lot of things that we can uh, improve to achieve full criminal justice and human rights in Korea. In a criminal law uh, course at the law school, student learns uh, the theoretical concepts such as a human being. Uh, Uh, whether a human being is uh, in nature good 
or bad, whether the purpose of a punishment is for restitution, individual deterrence or general deterrence, reformation or restraint, etc. Looking back on our past, there was a time when laws and punishments were not viewed as a means uh, to protect the right of it as citizen. Under the authoritarian regimes, the law was sometimes perceived to be tools to suppress and regulate the people. And there were times when legitimacy of punishment was questioned. I think it was also very much related to uh, the civil law system that South Korea is subscribing to in comparison uh, uh, to the common law system. As you know, in common law uh, system, uh, the principle of a precedent, study decisis principle, so-called, uh, is an important part uh, in f- formation and operation of the law. There is also fundamental difference in the way how the legal actors and state agencies are viewed under the legal system. The common law system consults the pre-existing statutory legislation and case law, but even if there is no explicit law to apply to a specific case, the court provides a fair forum in which a judge playing its impartial umpire role so that the prosecutor and the defendant as stakeholders with equal rights contest against each other. And eventually the court, through a decision by jury, create a new law. The civil law system, on the other hand, assumes that the law already exists and the judges and the prosecutors are perceived to be agents to realize this and assure the substantive justice. Uh, currently, I'm teaching comparative law, and the uh, uh, common law system heavily rely on the process of uh, court proceeding, while in civil law system, prosecutors, judges, and all legal actors are representing the state. So the way how justice is performed is quite uh, different. And uh, in, in older days in South Korea, the court, judges, and law, uh, lawyers, prosecutors were people who are very much uh, feared. People was always worried about their fate if they are subject to legal process. Uh, this uh, uh, kind of a Korean history, I think we can discuss a lot, but uh, we uh, was now improving, our, we have been successfully improving the system and Korean society is just now uh, democratic, and a country of constitutionalism, and a country of rule of law, we can say. However, the Korean society is still collectively fighting to accomplish transitional justice, curing scars from the past human rights violations. And I think more measures uh, can be taken uh, to remove deep-rooted corruption. And uh, as we all know, people demand fundamental law reform, especially in criminal justice area, there has been uh, kind of uh, abusive use of uh, criminal procedure and uh, criminal punishment. And uh, there uh, had been some changes, but Korea is still going through a lot of uh, uh, process of improvement to stabilize the sound criminal justice rule of law system. I will skip um, the the remainder of the discussion here, but uh, jump to the conclusion. So Korea now boasts a strong constitutionalism, the rule of law and human rights and criminal justice system, compared to many other countries in the world. The fact that people in Korea demand further reform of a judiciary and prosecutorial system proves its strength rather than weakness considering the deteriorating political situation and the ongoing uh, desperate struggles for human rights in many countries. We should remember that human dignity and worth and the right to pursue happiness will not be guaranteed unless the state constantly evolves to better serve the public. We should not tolerate any attempt to 
prolong injustice by rejecting changes. We should aim at human-centered criminal justice that contributes to the human rights, rule of law, and the peace of the world. Criminal justice should go hand in hand with the human rights to project, uh, protect society from crime without infringing uh, human dignity in the process. So what I wanted to emphasize is that Korea had gone through a lot of uh, important changes, and we have achieved a lot. But uh, as a comparative law scholar these days, I have a little bit of concern that sometimes judicial process is uh, playing too much role in Korean society. For example, lawmakers should have their own way of dealing issues politically in their process, but everybody try to sue the other party in court, which often uh, distort the strengths and healthy uh, operation of our society. I think rule of law is important. And uh, criminal justice should be performing its role correctly. But uh, overall speaking, our society in Korea should develop a healthier way of using criminal justice punishment. And all of the society should uh, uh, try uh, hard to guarantee human rights of uh, all of the involved uh, actors in the process. So I learned all this actually from Professor Kitchen Yu's book in terms of criminal justice, and I'm still learning it further by comparing Korean practice with other countries, and this was a really good opportunity for me to learn more. Thank you very much. Many thanks, uh, Director Peg. Uh, you showed a vivid uh, analysis of Korean constitutionalism. Uh, as a, a law professor. Uh, luckily, we uh, con can conclude our symposium. Uh, in the uh, following time, we have some uh, comments or questions and as a general discussion. Uh, the floor is open. Uh, do you have any opinions or suggestions like that. I will help you with that. I mean, more Kantani Ejaso, Uri Man Sarabari, you return your Suhago, Hangzang Kosue, Ker Nonjangi, or Turkey, Ker Nau, Kerber, you return Suzang, or Turkey, Suar, Henuji. 그런 문제에 대해서 굉장히 궁금하게 생각을 하거든. 그러니까 뭐 다른 얘기는 하지 말고 유기천 선생하고 황성덕 선생의 논쟁 문제가 어떻게 규결이 났는지 그걸 좀 말씀해 주시면 좋겠어요. 네, 저한테 이제 질문을 하셨기 때문에 조금 당혹스럽긴 합니다만은 성실히 제가 어, 몇 마디로 답변을 시도한다면 어, 황산덕 선생님의 비판 당시의 비판은 유 박사께서 샤머니즘이 강한 한국 문화를 미국이라고 하는 외국에서 어, 외국으로 발표를 했기 때문에 마치 한국의 문화가 저급한 아프리카 문화같이 오해될 수가 있게 만들었다 하는 식으로 이제 비판을 하셨고 또 한두 어, 인류학을 하는 분들이 유 박사님이 예를 든몇 가지들이 잘못됐다 막 이런 어, 그 당시에 이제 그 논쟁이 있어서 한국 논쟁사에서도 그것이 다잘 정리가 돼 있습니다. 근데 이제 어, 질문하신 대로 오늘의 관점에서 이제 우리가 그걸 어떻게 이해해야 되느냐 이게 이제 핵심 문제인데 
사실 시간 관계 때문에 제가 제 논문에 인용은 했으면서도 언급을 안 했습니다만 참 다행스럽게도 어 우리 재단의 이사이신 이시윤 어 이사께서 어 유숙 교수님이 얘기하신 이 샤머니즘적인 색채 물론 그것은 극복되어야 할 대상이긴 하지만 아직도 현대 한국에서 생생하게 작용하고 있는 저변에 깔려있는 힘이다 하는 것을 아주 그 예리한 관찰로 그 표현을 하셨습니다. 22페이지에 제가 한글로 고온 인용을 했습니다. 사실 참 번역하기가 쉽지 않은 것이라서 했는데 결론적으로는 아직도 그런 요소들이 상당히 있다. 아주 가장 제가 깜짝 놀라게 이런 것까지를 어떻게 관찰하셨나 하는 것은 하, 하버드 어, 신학대학의 하버드 디올로지컬 세미나리에 하비 콕스라고 하는 교수가 있습니다. 그분이 쓰는 책에서 한국의 지금도 기독교가 강하게 예, 그 전파력을 갖는 이유의 하나는 상당히 심, 어, 교인들이 샤머니즘적인 열광주의의 경향을 갖고 있기 때문에 그렇다 하는 것을 책에다가 썼습니다. 그래서 이제 예, 이시영 어, 이사께서 그런 것까지를 몇 가지를 이용하고 현대화된 한국 문화 속에서도 사고방식이 샤머니즘적인 사고방식을 우리가 아직 완전히 극복하지 못하고 있다 하는 점을 지적을 했을 때 저는 그게 전적으로 동의합니다. 그래서 참 문화라고 하는 것을 우리가 전체 타이틀에 이 문화라고 하는 것을 이렇게 내세운 이유가 유 박사님이 그때 정말 법적인 책임을 정확하게 예, 우리가 논의를 하기 위해서는 문화의 현실 자체를 잘 알아야 된다. 이걸 아주 그 당시에 선구적으로 얘기를 어, 논문에다가 써있고 그거를 그대로 이 호놀룰루에서 열린 제게 세계 제3차 동서 철학자 대회에서 어, 발표를 하시고 그 논문을 우리 자료집 예, 맨 뒤에 그대로 실었습니다. 어펜딕스라고 해서 Field Theory in the Study of Cultures Its Application to Korean Culture 이거를 정말 읽어보면 참 놀라운 수준이다. 저는 그렇게 생각하고 있습니다. 그래서 요즘 다시 학문의 뭐 학제 간의 연구니 예, 이제 이런 얘기를 많이 합니다만 이미 이 당시에 그만큼 어, 학자로서 이루어셨구나 하는 그런 생각을 갖고 있습니다. 뭐 제가 그게 다 전체적인 예 종합이 됐는지는 모르겠습니다만 저는 거기까지 이해하고 있습니다. 대단히 감사합니다. Other questions or comments? Uh, due to our time schedule, uh, concluding this symposium will uh, include a sort of a ceremony that is the dedication of Paul Liu collection. Uh, in this building at the second store, there are uh, library uh, collections, some collections. I remember vividly, the, uh, for example, Paul Liu, uh, no, no, uh, Kim Chun Hung collection, musician and dancer. Uh, 김천원 컬렉션, 크네즈 컬렉션, 어, some uh, very important collections. Uh, we have gathered uh, about 30 volumes of uh, Paul Liu and Helen s i l v i n So we'll dedicate today as a, a collection of this center. Uh, uh, I think uh, it is good uh, The, all uh, board members of the Liu Foundation come over to this stage 
with photo or for the photo. ね、あじこり、時間に、その、半、十分、なま、いきても、ね、韓国말로도、お、お、お、질문이아니라도、感想이라든지、논평、ま、いろんな、말씀です。これ、カムオーバー。いや、シェイズ、え、ワイフ、オブ、デ、レイト、プロフェッサー、バンダイク、エッド、ロー、スコール、I personally had a good friendship、uh, with him.、Uh, please. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kamsamida.、Uh, it's,、uh, it's wonderful to be here today, and、uh, I want to especially thank Professor Tung Bak for the wonderful job he's doing here at the University of Hawaii and promoting、uh, information and knowledge about. Korea, Korean society, Korean law in Korea, and of course his role as a human rights rapporteur.、Uh, I was, I'm just、uh, wondering,、uh, my late husband was very involved in、uh, three areas I thought I would bring up today. One is he was very interested in the issue of reconciliation, and he wrote a chapter. Which、uh, Professor Choi has cited in one of his publications on、uh, reconciliation between Korea and Japan and comparing it to some of the efforts here in Hawaii on reconciliation between、uh, our indigenous native Hawaiian people and、uh, the, the United States of America and the state of Hawaii. So, I think that was a very interesting、uh, chapter that he wrote, and、uh, it was a great honor that Professor Choi would、uh, cite it.、Uh, the second thing he uh, uh, wrote about quite a bit was the maritime delimitation in the Korean ocean waters. And in, Particular between Korea and Japan relating to Dakdo. And, and even one of his speeches that he gave was、uh, publicized and played on the ferry that used to go, I don't know if it still does,、uh, from Korea to, out the mainland to Dakdo. Uh, one of the other issues that he was very interested in, and I'm wondering what you folks from Korea think about it, and also whether or not Professor Tayun Beck t h i n k it's a human right. I, I teach international ocean law, and yesterday, as you probably all know, the Japanese government decided to start the release of radioactive. Wastewater from Fukushima. And、uh, I thought it was interesting that the current government of Korea didn't make any statements about that.、Uh, other human rights rapporteurs have said it violates the human rights of fishing people,、uh, neighbor, peoples of the neighboring countries, and、uh, even the rights of the Japanese people. So I'm just Wondering if there's any comment from anybody today about, about that. Do that. Yes, I'm not sure if 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 I'm not sure
하와이 대학교 철학과에서 주관을 합니다. 예, 예. 그 철학과 예, 홈페이지가 있습니다. 예, 예. 예, 그 보시면 아주 철학과 그 네. 주임 교수들하고 연락을 하겠습니다. 어, 예. 정말 이 동서 철학자 대회라고 하는 것이 그때는 10년마다 한 번씩 열렸습니다. 그래서 제 3차 대회에 참석을 하셨는데 예. 요즘은 5년마다 열립니다. 오, 아, 예. 그래서 여기 계시니까 정말 그런데 좀 참석하시면 예, 대단히 예. 좋을 것 같습니다. 예, 예 감사합니다. 네. 한, 한국말로 뭐 이제 해도 되니까 뭐 소감이라든지 감회라든지 한 말씀 하시죠. 예, 유기천 선생님 어, 기념재단에 제가 어, 이사로 벌써 뭐 10여 년째 봉직하게 된것 같습니다. 어, 우선 선생님께서 아, 아까 우리 최종고 이사장님께서 소개하신 대로 1960년대 서울대학교 제9대 총장을 역임하셨습니다. 어, 그리고 그로부터 한 25년 이후에 어, 여러분들 혹시 아시는지 모르겠는데 이수성 선생님이라고 우리 형법 역시 교수인데 서울대학교 총장을 하시다가 그분도 뭐 1년 정도 하시다가 국무총리로 김영삼 대통령 때 나아가셨고 저는 2014년부터 2018년까지 세분 중에 유기천 선생님도 1960년대 총장을 하시다가 한 1년여 하신 것 같습니다. 어, 저는 어, 임기를 4년간 다 채웠어요. 2018년까지. 그리고 저 우리 백태웅 소장님은 어, 그때 아마 브리티시 콜롬비아 어, 브리티시 콜롬비아 대학에 에, 계실 때 어, 그때가 2000몇 년인데 제가 법과대 학장할 때 우리 한국에 오셔가지고 어, 그때 또 저를 저하고 같이 일하던 부학장이 또 우리 백태웅 선생님하고 같이 에, 거의 동년배로 학교 어, 다니고 했었는데 이분이 저하고는 또 이제 10여 년 차이가 나다 보니까 어, 그 시대를 80년대를 제가 잘 몰랐어요. 그런데 어, 그때 그날 아침에 저 학장실로 오는 날 보니까 동아일보던가요? 어느 신문에 전면 인터뷰를 했어요. 백태훈 교수 한국에 오다. 백태훈 교수의 근황, 또 철학 뭐 이런 걸 해서 그때 이제 브리티시 콜롬비아 학장님하고 같이 오셨어요. 그래서 제가 백태훈 학장님한테 이, 이분이 당신이 아는지 모르겠는데 이렇게 유명한 분이다 이렇게 그 신문을 보여주면서 이야기를 했더니 그 학장님 아 저도 오늘 아침 신문을 잘 봤다 <웃음> 이러더라고요. 어 그리고 이제 세월이 흘러서 어, 그랬는데 그때 에, 이 하와이는 하와이 컨퍼런스는 어, 어 제가 여러 차례 왔던 기억이 납니다. 특히 이제 서울대학교 법과대학과 아, 버클리 로스쿨이 공동으로 어 저. 하와이 컨퍼런스를 주로 여러 차례 해서 그때도 왔었고 다른 어케이션으로도 왔었는데 지금 우리 백태형 소장님이 하와이 대학 한국 한국 법 한국과학연구소 소장으로 계시는데 그 사이에 제가 저 총장 할때 이렇게 보니까 미국에도 외국에는 뭐 어, 미국에도 보니까 버클리 대학에도 지금 한국법연구소가 존육어라는 어, 부시 정부의 차관보고 했죠. 어. 그분이 그분은 뭐 거의 그뭐 두세 살때 미국 와가지고 한국말을 전혀 못하는데도 불구하고 어, 잘하고 있고 아까 우리 최종구 이사장님이 여기에 한국관이 이렇게 있는 게 아마 전 세계적으로도 드물지 않나 했는데 제가 아, 베를린 대학 
한국에 가서 특강을 한 적이 있는데 그, 거기도 한국 학생들이 뭐 수백 명에 이르고 있고 파리 칠대학에는 아주 작지만은 대학 안에 한국 정원도 어, 차려놓할 정도로 해서 그 사이에 우리 이 한국 문화의 또는 한국 법 문화의 장달이 전 세계적으로 많이 펼쳐져 있고 오늘 또 유희천 선생님께서 직접 어, 참여하신 바 있는 이 화해 대학에서 이런 좋은 컨퍼런스를 하게 돼서 매우 기쁘게 생각합니다. 감사합니다. <웃음> 감사합니다. 어, 이런 대화 또 마음을 나누다 보니까 유기천 컬렉션을 여기에다가 설치하는 것만이 아니라 어, 유기천 스칼라십으로 어, 앞으로 이 하와이 한국학연구소하고의 지속적인 연관을 좀 갖고 싶다 하는 생각을 자연스럽게 하게 됩니다. 아, 이미 그것을 위해서 이번에 오신 김정섭 변호사님께서 어제 500불을 시사를 해 주셨습니다. 어, 과거에 헬렌 실빙 장학금을 받으셨던 그런 기억이 아마 상당히 감동적으로 일어났던 것 같습니다. 그래서 서울에 우리가 돌아가서 다시 이사회도 이제 모이게 되고 해서 좀더 진지하게 논의를 해서 정말 계속해서 우리 유기천 박사님의 정신이 이 하와이하고 연결될 수 있는 뭐 그런 것을 생각을 하겠습니다. 또 국내적으로는 어뭐 이번에 또 대통령이 이 서울법대 출신으로 되기도 하고 했습니다만은 정말 법과대학의 교육을 받은 사람들이 국내에서는 물론 세계에서 활동을 할때 어떤 정신으로 해야 되느냐 할 적마다 유기천 선생님의 두 가지가 생각이 납니다. 첫째는 6.25 전쟁이 일어났을 때그 어려운 가운데에서도 어, 교문 앞에다가 철제 아치를 만들어 가지고 휘아드 유스티지아 루아드 까엘룸이라고 하늘이 무너져도 정의를 세우라 하는 것을 그때 에, 그 만들었습니다. 그런 어려움 속에서 국난을 극복할 수 있는 힘이 나왔다 하는 생각. 그리고 전쟁이 끝나자 이제 서울에 올라오자 학교 안에 피데스라고 하는 전어를 창간을 하셨습니다. 그러시면서 유학장님이 그 당시에 비상시에는 정의가 더 중요하지만 일반 평시에는 신의가 더 중요하다. 어떻게 보면 뭐 법학적으로는 형법학적인 정의, 민사학적인 민사법학적인 신의 이렇게 해서 저는 어디 갈 때마다 예, 적어도 법과대학을 졸업한 사람은 신의와 정의, 정신이 철두철미하게 몸의 정신 속에 모장이 되어야 돼 있어야 된다 그렇게 생각을 하고 또 졸업생들이 그래 생각하고 있습니다. 그리고 매년 피데스라고 하는 저널이 지금도 계속되어 나가고 있고 옛날에 이 백대용 소장이 학생 시절에 거기에 시를 하나 발표한 일도 있습니다. 그래서 이제 저는 여기 올 때마다 지금도 또 시를 좀 써가지고 발표를 해달라고 했는데 여기 이제 이 교수님도 계시고 이렇게 해서 이런 마음을 글로서 모은고 그래야지만 이 앞으로 역사의 전성이 됩니다. 그래서 이런 여러 가지 우리가 앞으로 발전적으로 해야 할 일들이 있다고 하는 것을 확인하면서 정시에 우리 심포지엄을 마치도록 하겠습니다. 다시 한번 이 한국학연구소 방문해 주신 것을 진심으로 감사드립니다. Thank you again for visiting the Center for Korean Studies today, and I really appreciate all your help. support and uh, kind remarks today. Thank you very much, Professor Chair, for your yeah. wonderful leadership. Thank you.